Okay, so here's the thing. The first time I heard the word happiness, I asked my teacher, what is happiness? And why do people want happiness? Or how do we make ourselves happy? What it feels to be happy? And my teacher replied, happiness is peace. It is the tent when you do things that makes you feel right. I was at the school at that time, and I was supposed to be at the school. And I asked my teacher, can I be happy? And she replied, of course you can be, but not in a dramatic way, you know, but she continued telling that do what makes you feel right, do the things that feels right for you. And I said, okay, if that's the thing, then I'm gonna decide what is right for me. And the thing that was right for me was no school. I'm going home. I'm just leaving the school right away. And there was so much argument between my parents, myself, and teachers. But that was not the point. The point was that I didn't understand what she meant. Clearly, that I was home. But that emotion of happiness, that feeling of happiness within my own self was struck since then. I was trying to find happiness. I was going to all the people and asking, what is happiness and how do you find happiness? And of course, I went on Google. Actually, it's the father of God, Google, according to the context in Bhutan, and I searched what is happiness? How do you make yourself happy? And there were so many things that popped out. And I was like, well, let me try. And I tried, but I just cannot find happiness within myself. I went to one of my friends. She was not really a friend. She was more of like a classmate. And she seemed happy. And I went to her and asked, you seemed happy. How do you find that happiness within yourself? And she was like, hey, look at my dress. This is how it makes me happy. And I was like, no, that's, that's luxury. That's money. That doesn't make you feel happy, whatever. And then I went to an actual friend, one of my bestie, which we are still friends. And the first thing I asked him was whether he's happy or not, because I don't trust my friends, friendship goals. And, and then he said, yes, I'm happy, trust me. And I was like, okay, let me trust you for the very first time in my life. And then I asked him, how do you make yourself happy? And he was like, listen, taking all the postures in your life, he said, Happiness is within ourselves. Wah, 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 wah. That was what I said, and I was supposed to, because I just didn't want to face the consequences of our friendship goals. And he continued, happiness is within ourselves, and you will feel happy when you take that happiness from you. Beep! He farted, and I was like, bro, that's, that's not happiness. That's disgusting. And he was like, well, that's happiness for me. And I was like, okay. And, I was, and the more I was trying to find happiness, the more I realized that I was unhappy. I was not happy because I was going through all the perceptions of different people that I forgot that I had my own perception. And today, I realized that it's not about finding happiness. There is no formula to seek for happiness. It's all about creating happiness that lies on your hand when you're being your true self with an act of kindness and simple living. And today, I'm gonna teach you all and be a part of my art of creating happiness. But you might be wondering that why this 16 years old, well, I'm 16 if you don't know, that this stupid little teenager coming here and talking about the philosophy of life when he has not even lived half of his life. And that's why I want to ask, who in these audiences know how long are they going to live in their life? How, what do you mean by living half of your life? No one knows, but at least you know that you're alive right now and listening to me, right? The philosophy is that we are so preoccupied by what our future possibilities and future 
probabilities of how we are going to live our life and how long are we going to live is killing the fact that we are ourselves at this present moment and we can do things that's in front of us. And, and who knows that actually I'm living half of my life right now or this is just my life. Life is so unpredictable, as we all know. And to be yourself at a certain point of your life, you don't have to be 50s or 60s to understand this meaning of life. It's not about perceiving how long are you going to live, but it's about perceiving how much are you going to live at every moment of your life. And as for me, I know and I believe that I have perceived as much as what my life has taught me at every single point of my life. My life, and that includes this art of creating happiness. When I was young, I knew that I was not happy at some point of my life, and the reason was because I was not just myself. I was trying to be someone else that someone else's wanted me to be. I was lost. I was lost within the perception of all the other people that I forgot I had my own perception. I had my own perception, and that is the most important perception that you could possibly have and make it for yourself. I wanted to go on a party, I wanted to hang out, I wanted to spend the time with the people I wanted, I wanted to walk the way I want, I wanted to talk the way I talked, but I could not do nothing of those. And I was not able to do all of those things because of all the conservative and societal norms I was confined within. And I realized that I was not me. I was never a me until I actually discovered my own self. Not that I went to a jungle and discovered myself like the Discovery Channel, but the fact that I can be myself, the fact that I have this inner peace within myself, that I can discover it. And there was the thing. Those things that I couldn't do in my life was probably that I learned that there will always be some things, some situations that you cannot control. I couldn't control all of those things that I wanted to do, and I just let it go. I let it go not because I gave up, but because there was nothing that I could do about. But I thought if there is something that we cannot do, there's definitely some things that we can do. And out of all the confinement that we can do, I decided to create my own happiness. This art of creating happiness was hard for me, and I did when I was my own self. You don't have to perceive what others have to say about you. You perceive what you have to say about yourself. Not that your life is shambles and stupid, but your life is beautiful and you are the most beautiful person on earth. It's okay if you prioritize yourself on, uh, uh, than other of the people. It's okay if you are giving yourself a little bit more importance than others. It's okay if you are trying to be yourself because it really matters to be who you are and what you are. And that was my art of creating happiness. And that didn't just lie in this big circle of life, but also within the small circle of life. A simple dal and a rice with a vegetable curry is worth a meal, but no. How many of you prefer pizza with toppings over a simple rice? Everyone does. Everyone does prefer pizza over a simple rice. Living in a house that's made of bricks, that's made of stone, that actually shelters you is just enough, but no, we want to have a fancy house, we crave for those positions in our life. To wear a simple dress that will cover your privacy, oops, not like that, but a, a cloth that will cover, that will protect you from the heat and shelter is just enough. But no, we want to go for a shopping, we want to have all those fancy clothings, 
But here, I don't say that in order to create happiness, you don't buy all of those things or you don't dream about all of those things. It's not about how much more you have or how little you have or how much more are you wanting to have, but it's about how content are you with what you have. I was born and raised in a middle-class family, but I was content with what I had. When it rained, I went I sat by a window and read the novels that I will never be tested on. I was singing on the top of my voice, creating a disaster at my home, causing my mom to bring a broom and hit me, but and I didn't sing because I wanted to prove to my mom or to prove to the world that I can sing, but because I wanted to, and that brought me joy within myself. Not only that, I slept when the moon was high and I woke up without any haste that I should be somewhere in the next morning. And this act of simple living actually taught me that that actually made me happy. This act of simple living was my art of happiness, and it doesn't mean that to create your happiness, you have to live in the most simplest way that you could be. No, the simple act of living additionally taught me that these passions and dreams that I had actually overruled my positions when I was trying to be my own self and trying to live with simplicity. One of the polls, one of the researchers in the University of Sciences in UPenn has actually discovered that 90% of the people who has identified themselves as simple living has actually proven to have a better health and mental care after they have decided to earn less money. But not 100%, not 100% of the people were happy out of simple living, and that's possibly because all of us are different. All of us are unique, and also the way we create happiness depends on you. It's on your hand, it's how you create it, and it's how you take forward. And this happiness in your life should be something that you take forward in your life. It's not just that you try to wait for so many years so that you be happy, like you work hard so much, you stress so much right now on the verge of dying so that you could be someone else in the future that would feed you. I know that I must work hard right now, that I should be spending a lot of time in working myself so that I could be someone else in the future, that I could earn myself money and be happy. I know that. But when is that day coming? What is that someone else in my life? When is that day? When is that time? And when is that place coming? Is it even existing? And that's why you create your own happiness right away. And I was wrong in the beginning, trying to tell the girl about fancy dress that it's not happiness. She had the fancy dress, and that was happiness for her. And that guy who farted, that was happiness for him. We all have different happiness, and that's within ourselves. If you feel like you want to go for a shopping, just go and do it right away. Who knows that you will never be able to shop again. If you want to hang out with the people, just go, just go and do it, because you might not be able to do that again, as I didn't get that opportunity. When you have that opportunity to do something that would make you happy, that's within your confinement, just go and do it. Do it and create your own happiness. Not that you kill someone, and that's happiness for you, but the fact that what you can afford for yourself, what's within your control, make the most of it. And for some people, happiness might not have nine letters in them. For some people, it might be more or it might be less, but they have it, and they do have it when they create their own happiness. And, oh, I forgot to tell my name. I am Sabine and Sabine associates peace in the religion of Buddhism. And I'm telling you, actually, peace is telling you that you can create your own happiness that's within you when you are your own self, when you believe in yourself of who you are and what you are. I created my own happiness, so can you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.